Welcome back to 5 Minute Chemistry. Today we are going to talk about covalent bonds and molecules. So previously we discussed about the Lewis symbols, the valence electrons, and bonds in terms of ionic bonding, where a metal atom will lose one or more electrons and become a cation, and a non-metal atom will gain electrons and become a negatively charged ion, an anion, and based on Lewis's theory, this happens because these atoms want to get to a stable structure with their electrons, which would mean eight electrons in their valence shell, and if it is a metal atom, it will have a few valence electrons, which it can lose and become a positively charged ion, and in a non-metal it has a lot of valence electrons, so if it just gains one, two, or three more electrons, it will have a full eight electron shell. But we also know that there are a lot of compounds in which non-metals bond with other non-metals, and in this case, none of the atoms will want to give up their electrons, because they all want to gain electrons to reach the 8 electron structure. In this case, using Lewis's theory, we can come up with a way to share electrons between these atoms to fill up the octet of them. So instead of one atom taking the electrons of the other atom, these atoms will pool their electrons together, so all of them can get a fully filled valence shell. So we already know from Avogadro's work, which was, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 years before Lewis, that a lot of these uh, elements, which are gases in uh, room temperature, are actually in diatomic molecules. So, for example, chlorine, we know that chlorine is in a form of Cl2, so chlorine molecule which has two chlorine atoms, and using Lewis's theory, we can explain how these molecules are created. So if we take a look at these two chlorine atoms, both of them will have seven electrons in their valence shell instead of the ideal eight. And when we draw these Lewis structures, we will draw three pairs of electrons. So six of the electrons are in pairs, and there is one electron which is unpaired, which is lonely. And based on that, we know that next to this electron is the quote-unquote hole we need to fill up to get to the eight electrons. So in this case, what we can do is we can move these two chlorine atoms close together, and these two lonely electrons can form a pair like this between the two chlorine atoms. And if we take a look at their electronic structure, so now the left-hand side, we have a chlorine atom with eight electrons. And on the right-hand side, we also have a chlorine atom with eight electrons. So sharing is caring, and this is how the two chlorine atoms bond together. If we consider hydrogen chloride, then we have to take a look at hydrogen, and we know that even though hydrogen only has one electron, it is in the first period, so hydrogen and helium, they have a fully filled electron shell if it has two electrons, so both hydrogen and helium only wants to get two electrons, so this lonely electron from the hydrogen can pair up with the lonely electron from the chlorine atom, and now we have the chlorine atom having its octet structure, and the hydrogen has the two electrons it needs to fill its valence shell. And we can see that oxygen has two electrons missing to have an octet structure, which is uh, depicted in the Lewis symbol by having two electrons that are unpaired, and then the remaining four electrons are in two pairs. So now we could try to pair up these lonely electrons with lonely electrons from the other oxygen atom, something like this, and now we have actually four electrons which are shared between the two oxygen atoms. So if I take a look at the left-hand side oxygen atom, it has eight electrons. And similarly, I also have the octet structure for the right-hand side oxygen atom. And for nitrogen, which has three electrons that are drawn as unpaired in our Lewis diagram, you can guess that we can pair these unpaired electrons with electrons in the other nitrogen atom. So let's just move them closer together. And now we have six electrons that are between two nitrogen atoms and which are shared. So left-hand side nitrogen atom has eight electrons. Right-hand side nitrogen atom has eight electrons too. So this was kind of a complicated way to draw these molecules and uh, draw the electrons that bind them together, so we can come up with an easier solution. So if we take a look at chlorine molecule here, for example, instead of having the two dots between the two chlorine atoms, we can draw one single line between them, symbolizing the bond 
over there, and this is going to be called a single bond, which is made up of two electrons. So this one line is actually standing in for two electrons, and we can say that one bond between these two atoms is made up of two electrons. In case of the oxygen, because it has four electrons that bind these two oxygens together, so four electrons are shared between the two oxygen atoms, now we can draw two lines, and the two lines will symbolize the four electrons, and this will be a double bond. And for nitrogen, we will have to draw three lines to have the six electrons shared between these two atoms. Based on this, uh, we can define the covalent bond. So covalent means valent together, so co is means together, so coordinate is made up of two or more ordinates, and cooperation is when multiple people operate together. So covalent bond is when the electrons from multiple atoms, valence shells, are shared between each other. And we can have two, four, or six electrons shared between two atoms, and these will be called single, double, and triple bonds. And a molecule we can define based on covalent bonds, and the molecule will be a finite neutral entity which is made up of atoms that are connected by covalent bond. So finite is important because, for example, diamond, the carbon atoms are bound together in a huge network of covalent bonds, but a diamond is not a molecule. It doesn't matter if you remove or add carbon atoms with more covalent bonds to the diamond, it will still be the same diamond. So it is not really finite, you could have like an infinitely sized diamond, in theory of course, but for a molecule you have to have this specific finite chain of atoms, and it has to be neutral, so the molecule is made up of neutral atoms, and it contains all the electrons that came from the neutral atoms. This is it for today, and I will see you tomorrow.